It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Let's go back to your huddle. On Giants.com. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And the Giants mobile app. Go, 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 Part go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Yeah. Welcome to the newest edition of the Giants huddle podcast. John Schmelk with you. Today's guest, three interior offensive linemen for the New York football Giants. Will Hernandez, Shane Lemieux, and center Nick Gates. As a reminder, you can find the Giants Huddle podcast on your favorite podcast platforms, on the Giants mobile app, and at Giants.com slash podcast. Remember, folks, tell all your friends that are Giant fans about it to subscribe. It's how you spread the word and get more listeners and subscribers to the podcast. All right, let's start with Will Hernandez entering his fourth year as a member of the Giants, perhaps changing positions to right guard. Here's my chat with Will. And now we're joined by Giants offensive lineman. Maybe I should say right guard. We'll talk about it. That's Will Hernandez. Will, it's good to see you, man, first of all. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. All right, so what has been this adjustment for you? You've been out there playing right guard a little bit more. I went back. I couldn't find the last time you played on the right side. So let's start there. Why don't you tell me? When's the last time you really played primarily on the right side? Um, well, it would have to, we would have to go back to high school. Uh, I played right guard in high school. Uh, I think it was about a couple of years. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's it's a little bit of an adjustment. But, you know, it's all good. How- <laughs> Keep Keeps it uh, keeps things interesting and uh, gives me a new, new uh, skill set and and, uh, you know, a new way to, like, you know, have fun with the sport. Did you have any muscle memory left from high school, or was that all gone? <laughs> yes, it's still there. <laughs> it wasn't still really? there, yes. Uh, you know, the transition wasn't as bad as I thought, um, and it wasn't as complicated. Um, you know, first couple of days, once you got, get some reps in you and, you know, you kind of start, you know, getting out there and moving around, it, it kind of slowly starts, you know, you start adapting to it just like you would anything else. Interesting. So... What has it been like working with Rob Sale, your new offensive line coach, and how much is different than what you were being taught previously? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, you know, he's a great coach, you know, very attention to detail. You know, he makes sure you ask a lot of questions, make sure you have things down. And, you know, it just helps you out, especially, you know, when you uh when you when you like going over things over and over, uh, like I do, you know, he's he's great for that. And uh, you know, he's always there to make sure you 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 understand things. If not, you can give it to you three different ways so you can so you can get it and uh it's it's been great we had a chance to talk to um duke merriweather your off-season trainer what has it been like working with him and what are some of the things you guys are working on together to try to take that next step for you as an offensive lineman yeah yeah duke uh you know he's a great coach you know we we had a lot of fun out there got a lot of good work in and uh you know i learned a lot as well um you know it was it was great working out there uh you know we Right now, we we focusing on exactly that the 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 position change and you know making sure one I move smoothly, two you know I have you know all the plays down you know and three I can put them put them together pretty much, um, and yeah that's exactly what we worked on this whole time. We've been cross training, and uh, you know I'm just focused on being the best. Uh, the best football player at whatever position they put me. So that's that switch. Is it mostly just like a swapping the footwork in the hands? What hand comes first? Yeah. The foot, you know, staggering all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty much everything's everything's pretty much just backwards. You know, at the left guard position, you got your right foot up, left foot back. Right guard, it's left foot up, right foot back. And uh, you know, hands the hand that goes down is different. And then basically, pretty much, you what you do is you you flip flop the playbook in your head as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know the five positions on the offensive line, they're all connected somehow. Sure. So you're able to connect the dots pretty easily. And, you know, that's another thing that, you know, the coaches do great is they make sure everybody knows on the offensive line what the other guy is doing. So when there is a chance or when there is a opportunity for a guy to move positions or has to move positions, it's not a completely new world to them. And they kind of know um, a little bit of how to start and how to play it. How tough was it for you last year coming back from all your health stuff that you dealt with midseason and trying to rebound and, and get back onto the field? Because I don't think, you know, it affects so, so many people differently. Yeah. Was that how tough was it for you to kind of get back to your normal self to get yourself back out there on the field? I mean, it was a it was a crazy, crazy experience, uh, you know, dealing with the COVID stuff and all that. But um, I think, you know, at, I think at the time I was just so uh, focused on coming back and, you know, just playing and and being you know being being able to play back to the level before I got sick and all that so I didn't really notice how bad it was until 
a few weeks, a few a few months later after I recovered, you know? It took that long, huh? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I was good to play. You know, I well, was fine. I I it took fine. that long for you to realize But yes, it, it, it yeah. took me a while to like, you know, after you really are, you, your body really does recuperate. And then you kind of think back on how you were before then. You're like, oh, yeah, I was, you know, I was pretty bad. But um, no, I mean, it was a, it was a, a crazy experience. But, you know, we pushed through it. We, we we got through it, and I'm good as ever now. And you're fully healthy now. Good oh to go. yeah, for, uh, been been help, been fully healthy for a long time now. Awesome. Final question for you then: What are your major goals this year for Will Hernandez? You know, you head into your fourth year now. This is a big year for you. Position change. Um, what are your big time goals? My first goal is being able to help this team as f much as I can um, with the with the first with the position change. Being playing, and, you know, if I'm playing right guard, being the best right guard, you know. And then uh, after that is winning. You know, winning's always, you know, what everybody, why we're all here, why we all train, why we all do what we do. So um, I would definitely say, you know, help the team out with uh, being the best right guard possible and then also winning. Well, good stuff, man. We look forward to seeing you on the field. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's Giants guard Will Hernandez. As a reminder, limited Giants season tickets are on sale now for the 2021 season. In addition to ticket savings, membership benefits include access to exclusive events, experiences, pre-sales, and more. You can lock in your seat starting at just 100 bucks. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash tickets for more information. All right, now let's turn our attention to Shane Lemieux, a rookie last year out of Oregon, a fifth-round pick. Played left guard, will once again compete for a starting guard spot this year. Now we're joined by second-year Giants offensive lineman Shane Lemieux. Shane, uh, you basically became the primary starter for the more than the second half of the year. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the things you think you learn being able to get that valuable on-field experience as a rookie. Yeah, anytime you can get in-game experience, it's, it's extremely valuable. Just uh, learning the speed of the game because it's a lot different than practice. And we got to play, you know, in a important December football games where it meant a lot. It's so obviously the speed of the game sped up. So just getting those in-game reps um, just, just made me feel more comfortable out there. Anything catch you by surprise, for lack of a better way of asking the question, that maybe you were a little surprised by when you hit the field for the first time in a real regular season NFL game? Yeah, you know, I think every single every single rep you have to be at your best. It's unlike college where um, – um, you could you could take a playoff, I guess, so to speak. In the NFL, you have to be ready every single play because someone could take you know, advantage of you. So yeah. What are some of the things that you're really trying to work on heading into your second year? Uh, just you know, being a better professional. You know, being a pro. Learning. I learned a lot from last year, and just taking the nutrition, the recovery, in the weight room, film study, all that to heart, and just put it out on the field. I know in the NFL, a lot of times for guards, teams try to isolate you guys on these very athletic three technique defensive yep. tackles, right? When, what are some of the things that you look at that are the keys for you to try to improve to become a best, better pass protector in those situations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it just all comes back to athleticism and the technique. We have a good coach with Rob Sale. He's teaching us a lot of good techniques. Um, and just, you know, just put that all on the field. You, know, you can do it in practice, and uh, practice reps really turns into game execution. So just getting it right in practice so it shows up on tape on Sundays. What has it been like for you? You've been down through three offensive line coaches, two yeah. last year. Now Rob Sales coming in. What has that been like for you? It's, you know, it's an adjustment, but at the same time, I feel like offensive line in general has the same kind of philosophy with, you know, coach to coach. And, you know, you block tight zone the same as tight zone, different differentiating through coaches and stuff. So I think it's just, it's just more techniques and verbiage, just getting adjusted to it. And, uh, you know, I think we're, we're, we, we, we adjust well, so yeah. So actually, I want to think of that a little bit. What does actually change? Is it actually, is it things like hand placement? Is it how you guys, you know, move together on an outside zone, for example? What are yeah. actually some of the things that change it's from coach mostly, to coach? Uh, it's mostly like combo blocks or combination blocks, um, the different techniques of how you want to fit. And then it's it's verbiage, you know, what you call these combination blocks, what you call your slide calls, what you, you know, because a lot of the times the all-line coach brings it from where he was at previously. Sure. So that's that's the biggest adjustment, honestly, but that's... Yeah, it's verbiage. How valuable has it been actually being able to get on the field with him and yeah. your whole offensive line group yeah. this offseason as opposed to last year when you guys were doing everything on a computer screen? For sure. You know, I think we had to, we had to get a head start in before training camp because training camp last year, we, we had a new O-line coach, and plus I was new to the NFL. So everything was an extreme adjustment coming in. And, I was, you know, I felt like I was drinking water out of, you know, a fire hose. Fire hose, hose yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, it's good to be out here and learn the techniques and get a jump start before training camp. How important is it for you, and maybe you've developed it already, to have that really good relationship with Andrew Thomas? So many of these teams, mm -hmm. and Nick Gates for that matter, run these stunts and these twists, yeah. the TEs, the ETs, all that stuff, for you guys to be able to pass those off. It looked like you guys were really getting a pretty good groove doing that at the end of last year. Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, the more I know about Andrew, the more I pick Andrew's brain, and the more 
I, I know what he's thinking, you know, when, when stuff gets tough, uh, I think that it's, it's better. You know, I think um, I, Andrew and I got some chemistry going, Nick and I got some chemistry going, and it's just getting reps together. Cause you know, you have to, you have to realize how deep Andrew sets and you have to match that level. And then Nick has to know, you know, when, when he needs to help and when he doesn't. And so it's just, it's all about chemistry and just getting reps together. Final question. What are your goals for this year? Goals this year is uh, just get better every single game. Nice and simple. Shane, yeah. appreciate the time, man. Yeah, take care. That's Giants guard Shane Lemieux. Don't miss out on your chance to experience a premier hospitality experience watching Giant games and world-class concerts in 2021 as a Giants suite partner. Limited full-season locations are available or place a deposit for individual games. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash suites for more information. All right, let's finish it off with Nick Gates, Giants center. He started at center for the first time last year, first time ever playing the position. We talked about that and more with the Giants starting center in 2021. All right, and now we're joined by Giants offensive lineman Nick Gates. Nick, last year, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but in some ways, did it feel like a rookie year for you since it was your first year at center? Or is that maybe a step too far? Um, I'd say at the center position, definitely. I mean, I was learning, you know, a whole new position coming into the season, and you know, the first five games, you can, I mean, everybody watched. It wasn't, they weren't great on my part, but, I, you know, there was a little bit of learning curve in there for me. But once I, you know, kind of felt, figured it out and got comfortable, I was, I was ready to roll. I don't want to get tactical now. What were some of the things that, that you figured out that you think helped you kind of flip that switch and become better as the season went along? I think the biggest thing is just becoming comfortable and, at center and just snapping the ball and making the calls and just mentally. I think the biggest thing was mentally for me, just, you know, making sure me and Danny are on the same page and, you know, watching film every week and making sure you, you see the right things and, you know, just seeing the different things that the, the defense throws at you and making the right call. Yeah, I'm not sure our fans have, have quite the grasp at how important that is. What do those pre-snap calls impact when you're when you're making the – Daniel's doing all the pointing, you guys are communicating. How does that impact what happens on the actual play? Uh, it impacts the whole play. If we don't you, – you don't get everybody on the right guy, you're definitely not going to be able to get the ball out or, if, you know, you can't – you don't get everybody – pointed the right way you're not gonna be able to run the ball well so. now this is in terms of like either sliding protection left sliding right yeah, identifying everything. the mic all that stuff right exactly yeah left or right i mean you got a slide side that's three guys usually in the man side back side and they need to know who's who's who and who the left side has and who's who the back has and everything interesting so and then that will impact too so let's take the next step now once you get the pre-snap done and then snap comes and let's say we saw this a lot early in this season especially teams run all those stunts right the tt mm -hmm. twist and the te twist and all that stuff at what point does the communication kick in for you guys where you pass those off correctly and you have the right depth and all that sort of stuff? Um, a lot of that is just, you know, pre-snap stuff. Just being able to see what alignment they're in and see which where the defense is rotated along with the safeties and stuff like that and what, you know, what kind of technique the, the defense got, defense linemen are using and, you know, just little things like where their hands placed or wh which foot's up, which foot's back. And that's just a lot of things you see on film. So it's not so much like after the snap, it's just, you're just reacting at that point. You know, you just, you know, you do a lot of your work up front and, you know, watching film and, and doing things like that. Interesting. How much did it impact you then and the line when you guys had to have that mid-season coaching switch on the yellow line? How much, how much really changed for you guys or, or did they really try to just make it a, a smooth transition given how important all this stuff is you're talking about? Oh, yeah, no, it was definitely difficult. It's always definitely difficult to lose a coach that, you know, everybody loved in the room and it just, it is what it is, you know, it just stuff happens and you just got to roll with it and, you know, it's, it's a business. So it's just the way it is. And uh, they didn't really try to do too much with this playbook, stayed the same, call stayed the same. And, you know, just a little uh, technique, a little tuning here, a little tuning there that, you know, the new coach wanted to have. Well, now the good news, you have Rob Sale now, uh -huh. but you get to work with him for a whole off season. Oh, yeah. And actually you're having spring practice. Who knew this was a thing, right? It's great. I know, right? It's, it's crazy. I'm happy to be back. You know, we're a young off the line and we definitely need it. So. What has it been like working with Coach Sal? Oh, he's awesome. He's a good coach, good teacher. You know, you learn you learn something new with him every day, and he's uh, he's just a good person too. So, what are some of the things that he's focusing in on you guys so your young offensive line can grow together, like you talked about, mm -hmm. and kind of take that next step? Just trying to like simplify and make everything easier. I'd say just like with the calls and just you know teaching technique, just simpler and just just making it easy, like less making sure we can just play faster, basically. How much, what types of things change? Is it in more individual technique, how you set your feet, where your hand placement is, or is it more how you guys are working together on like outside zones and combo blocks, second level stuff? Uh, both, there's, you know, there's definitely things you need to 
critique and, and fine tune and technique wise. And that's what he's doing right now. I think that's a big thing right now, just tuning your technique. And then once the season comes, I think it's more like, you know, communication and calls and making sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to that stuff. From the outside looking in, it looked like from our perspective that after that buy, the offensive line really seemed to lock in, right? Mm -hmm. And the play really improved. Did you guys get that same feel being on the field together and watching? Because you guys go through this tape methodically after every game. Oh, yeah. Was it much better, you guys think, after the bye as well? Uh, I, that four-game win streak we went on last year, I feel like we really came together right there. I, I can't remember if that was before. I think it was a couple week, game before, a couple after, yeah. yeah. I, we started to come together, and everything just started to click. And, you know, once you start winning, it's contagious. And, you know, it, it, the building was fun to be around. And just everybody was having a good time I mean, winning, winning ball games. How much room still is there to grow for this young offensive line? As you, you know, do more together, you might have Will now on your right-hand side. Mm -hmm. He was on your left-hand side previously. You know, Matt will have a chance to win that right tackle spot. So what's now the growing process? What's, what's the ceiling for this group as you guys play more together? Uh, I feel like there's no ceiling to us. We just got to, you know, go out there and play the football, we, the kind of football we know how to play. And, you know, we're a young group. And if we, uh, we can figure it out all out together, we could, we could be playing together for a long time. And I feel like that's the best uh, – best for offensive line is when you, you get together and you play for three, four or five years together and you guys you just you guys know know what to do with each other without even communicating it. And is that mostly individual improvement or is that I hate that we use the word chemistry, it's so overblown, but just your ability to, to, to work together so you work properly as a five man unit to protect together. Yeah, it's just just knowing what to do on every play and usually knowing, you know, what the person next to you is gonna do and it is chemistry. It's just, you know, make it's working together, basically. So, And the only way you can get better at that by is doing it, right? Yeah, it's all reps. That's a big thing about offensive line play. It's all reps and, you know, just being able to just do it over and over and over and over again. And finally, I'm sure you guys are excited. Look like you kind of got the run blocking figured out a little bit as mm -hmm. you moved along. Unfortunately, I think by that time, Saquon wasn't yeah. healthy anymore. Yeah. How excited are you to kind of keep this, you know, more that gap scheme, downhill running style you adapted and now – insert Saquon Barkley oh yeah no it's uh, we definitely started to pick it up there towards the end and you know we were, we were a good rushing team there I think we went on like I think it was like six or seven games yeah. in a row we rushed over 100 yards which is just pretty good yeah, but it'll be it'll be good to have Saquon back he's just a, a freak athlete he it's, it looks like the hole's blocked up and he'll he'll find a way and pop it out the backside or take it out the front side and it just it just pops through 60 70 80 yard runs sometimes and that's just what Saquon could do let me ask you this, too, because I think it's, when I, I see it on tape, I'm curious if you guys see the impact on the field, too. Once Daniel became that running threat, right, mm -hmm. and teams had to keep that backside defender there so he doesn't keep it and go, yep. did you see that have a real impact on how defenses can load up and, and try to stop you guys in the run game? Yeah, no, definitely. That definitely helps out with the, 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 the cutbacks and things like that. It opens that hole up a little more. And instead of making, making it an arm tackle now, it's, uh, you know, there's usually none of that there, and you, there's a, a guy that has to respect Daniel because he can pull the ball and run. And run a long way, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Nick, good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. We thank Nick Gates for joining us, and we also thank Shane Lemieux and Will Hernandez on the Giants Huddle Podcast, which you can find at Giants.com slash podcast, the Giants mobile app, and on your favorite podcast platforms. Find the subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star positive review. It helps the podcast and makes it easier for other people to find when they search for podcasts. For Will, for Shane, for Nick, I am John Schmelk. We'll see you next time on the Giants Huddle.